But miraculously, there's going to be a road between oceans. I don't know how they're going to make it. I don't know how they're going to build it. But I saw America all the way to India. There was a road on top of the sea. I'm like, how is this possible? But I saw it happening. That is the most interesting part about the prophet because the prophet doesn't have common sense. But somebody with five senses can never tell you there's going to be a road in the middle of the sea. That's impossible. It's easy for you to say, Moses divided the water, the sea, and he walked on the dry ground. But if you are Pharaoh, to hear that we, we follow the people, but they open the sea. <laughs> and I saw a signature. I believe it's in the White House. I don't know which house was it, but it looked like a White House where they were signing some papers and they were proving a road between America all the way to India. And also in the realms of the spirit, I saw that the most crucial place in the world world that needs prayers is Japan. Because I, I, I saw the north side of Japan and I saw the, the east side of Japan. It was like the northeast. And right there, I saw earthquake. I saw over 30,000 people. I might say they lost count. They may just say thousands died, but they, they, they lost count. Many lives were taken by that earthquake. So we need to send prayers to Japan. Mainly the northeast side of Japan is in need of prayer. And I, I, I visited South Africa in the realms of the spirit and I saw uh, people were out there in the streets. And they were fighting and uh, they were throwing stones on the cars. They had like petrol bombs. You know, when you take a bottle and you put petrol and you light fire and you throw and stuff. They were throwing that all just before the election because uh, this party that is ruling right now is going to rule again after this election. But there was a big havoc in the streets to affect that the election was not peaceful. There was violence everywhere. But at the same time, I saw victory coming to the, to the, to the party that is there. I believe it's called ANC, AANC, something like that. I saw them walking into power again. But then I saw the electricity, the lights of South Africa being restored again. Since they are suffering with lights, it's gonna be restored again. God show me that. And the economy is going to shoot very soon. It's going to go up. But the election is going to disturb a lot of things. So pray for mainly foreigners that are in South Africa. Because this, this traffic where people were in the streets was mainly targeting foreigners. Foreigners. And I saw Nigerians voicing against the South Africans. So we need to pray for those lives to be saved. And we need to pray that there they be peace within South Africa. And also, I, I went to Israel. But you have to pray for the leader because I saw him turning his back on Christians. And the anger of the Lord rose against Israel. So pray for his decision because as a leader, you should be able to accommodate all religions in the country. So send your prayers towards Israel, especially towards that Benjamin, uh, because God wants to use him to be a blessing and to be a bridge to the people that are in, in Israel. But if he doesn't listen to the dreams God is giving him, he is going to mislead the people of Israel. And when they are misled, it's going to be very bad. So pray for the nation of Israel because uh, lives have to be saved. It's very important. It's very important. Uh, I also was praying for America. This one is crucial now. Because whenever there is a bombing or wherever there is a gunshot or something, it's always somebody is a mental case. Somebody is diabolic. Somebody is this or 
a terrorist group who claim we did this, we did this, but this one was different. Because this one was an in-house thing. And I had too many gunshots. This was more of a professional job. Because there are people that are being targeted. So we need serious prayers for America. I don't know if it is the same event. After those shooting, there is an event that I saw. This one was specifically DC. I saw DC under attack that many lives were claimed. Part of Virginia was also affected. On the DMV area, Maryland was saved. But DC was targeted. I don't want to go deep on this one, but when the dates come closer, I'll tell you full details. I don't want to scare people in DC. But this was a havoc. It's an in-house thing. There are many lives that are at stake, and these are people of high profile. These are people that are in place. So we need to pray. It's like an attack. I don't want to call it terrorist attack, but it's an attack. So the church has to pray. This one is the duty of the church to pray. So we need to pray for America. Also, I saw not only America, places like Florida. There's a place called Nevada, if I'm not mistaken, in America. Uh, there, was, there was Florida, there was Nevada, there was Carolina, and other places. I saw floods affecting. But this became like a lot of places around the world because I see a lot of, of, of eyes melting. And I see the sea rising. So it was like many buildings, especially close to the sea, were affected. I, I can actually say some were actually covered by water. So we need to pray. We really need to pray. We really need to pray. It's very important that we pray. I saw the economy crashing. I saw the economy crashing and I, I don't know how to advise on people that buy and sell houses for 2024. When the time comes, it will be clear and I'll advise, but uh, the decision was made by those that make those decisions. I don't know who they are and who gave them those powers, but the decision was made that many people have to die. We're overpopulated. So some people have to die. So there is type of a virus released. But this virus, you need money to survive from this virus. It's like you'll be paying to be cured or you'll be paying for your own life. I don't know exactly, but the visions will be clear as the time comes closer. But I, I, I saw a different type of virus because the economy to, to balance, it's a world crash. It's like we are going back to 2008. But this one now, for it to balance, the solution had to be made by those making a decision. Many lives have to be cut. Many lives have to be cut. So I saw many people dying so that economy can balance. It's like an economy crashing. A bank systems affected. Many, many things got affected. So I'm not sure how to advise people that flip houses and stuff, but... Uh, Allow God to lead you when you do your business. When the time comes closer, I shall pray. And uh, you shall see. There is something deeper now. Because I thought COVID virus was the max maximum. But there's another one. That one is already on the way. This one is not for breathing and stuff. This one is for sleeping. This virus will affect your whole system. You, 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 you were programmed to spend the whole day, sleep eight hours, spend the whole day, sleep. Uh, this one, you're going to be sleepy anytime. It's on the way. You're going to be sleeping anytime. And sometimes you sleep tonight and you wake up tomorrow night. There's not going to be balance in the sleeping way. So you have to pray that this will not touch you. Because the danger of this virus now is because there are two people that have been sitting for years. One group has been saying, let's release robots. You know robots? Like. And the other group have been saying, we don't want robots. 
So these ones that wants to release robots are the ones introducing the virus for people to sleep. So imagine you're going to school and the teachers are asleep. You're going to go to the bank, half of the workers, they are asleep. So the only solution was to introduce robots. But robots then will become a threat to all humanity in this world. Because few people will have control over these robots. Hijack them and start killing people through these robots. I don't want to talk about World War III and stuff like that, but people have to be very careful. When you see the sleeping virus coming, some people may think I'm just talking. If you go on my video, which I did 2016, 17, 16, 16, 15, 16, it's called Prophet Passion 666, like 666. On that video, I was sitting like this, wearing a blue, light blue suit, a sky blue, and I told people the coming of coronavirus. In 2016, I spoke about the virus that was coming in 2019. Just as I'm speaking to you right now. I don't know if you understand. So it's going to be a sleeping virus which is going to bring unbalance and the need for robots shall be there. And robots will be introduced bit by bit, bit by bit. They'll start with games, the robots. They'll start with playing games and you'll be entertained. They'll be introduced into your workplaces because there is no one else to fill those gaps. But later on, humanity will regret. So it's a call for the whole church to pray. It's a call for the whole church to pray. People are going to start feeling weak like never before. Like They're just getting weak. They start sleeping, sleeping. Their routines are affected. So the solution will be robots. But when robots come, later on, they will take over. And they will be a threat to humanity. So pray that this one will not happen. Because the enemy is going to come and crush humanity through this one. I don't know if I make sense to many people. Yes. And God says there is a sign that triple six is going to be introduced internationally and it's going to be in the open. You will see this is triple six. It won't be written six, 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 but you will see. And this is triple six, but you not have an option. So I said, God, what is the sign then? And God says, there shall be a breaking news on TV where you shall see a sheep on fire. Fire. When you see the sheep on fire, know that triple six is about to be introduced. And it shall be in a place where you can't say no. Because you will not buy without it. You will not sell without it. You will not fly without it. You won't leave your city without it. It's like you have no option, but that's the mark of the beast. Accepting it is accepting that I belong to the devil. Remember, the devil and Jesus are different. Jesus doesn't force you, but demons force themselves into you. Jesus knocks at the door of your heart, and you willingly open the door and say, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. But the devil ain't that. The devil forces himself into you. And as we are in 2024 now, I saw uh, a group of these pastors here in America that are so jealous of God blessing us and using us. So they faced by introduced witchcraft prayers. But the witchcraft prayers did not work. They tried to work with some people they know in the government. It did not work. They tried to look for women that they will put there on social media and say, I was slept with this man of God, or I was tricked by this man of God, or I was raped by this man of God, and it didn't work. Here is the danger now. Because none of all our churches were affected. But then I saw them trying to send someone with a gun in the church. And God says, never even panic in one day. My end is upon all of you. No weapon formed against your person. But you shall see people 
walking in church and the power of the Holy Spirit will hit them. And they will confess. So whatever they are planning, it's not like these people are evil people. They think they are fighting for God. They are just so not yet poor. Remember, Saul was killing Christians because he thought he was working for God. He thought it was a blasphemy to say in the name of Jesus. It's the same with the, they have a soul spirit. It's a soul spirit. Another one is called Alexander spirit. You know what Alexander did in the Bible? You know? Uh-uh. You don't know? You don't know? Who blasphemy and uh, Paul led them into the hands of the devil? Oh, my church. Google it. Let's read. I hope I'm not wrong. Of two of you, the hand It says what? Let me check myself. Yeah. It says what? Um, it's in Acts nineteen uh, thirty-three, mm. and they drew Alexander out of the multitude. The Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand, and would have made his defense upon the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, "Great is Diana of the Ephesians." Hmm. Mark fifteen verse twenty one. What does it say? Mark fifteen twenty one. And Second Timothy four fourteen, Mark fifteen twenty one, and they compel one Simon, a Syrian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander, and Rufus, to bear his cross. Verse twenty two, and they bring him unto the place called. Let's go Second Timothy four fourteen, the book of the evangelist team. And it says, 2 Timothy 4, 14. Yes. Alexander the coppersmith did me much heart evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may be, it may not be, be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So, Alexander is an evil spirit that fights the work of God. The same with Saul. Saul is actually convinced that we as the church must never believe in the name Jesus. So, we ever preach Jesus, Saul will kill them. It's not like Saul is not a man of God. He is of God. But he doesn't know the new wave of the Spirit. I don't know if you're hearing me. The problem with preachers is not that they are not good people. It's that when something new comes, the old wine cannot be in the new wine skin. I don't know if you follow. So there are people that are already sending witchcraft prayers because they don't believe God is with us. So I saw their jealousy growing. Witchcraft prayers that grew into trying to find some people in the government to fight us, that grew into trying 
to find ladies to destroy us that grew into trying to send someone to shoot us. But God says, if I be for you, who shall be against you? I don't know if you follow. I, I wouldn't know how exactly to point out names, but maybe I will speak with initials because I saw M.M., a man of God, in the coffin. I saw him on a platform. I saw something shaking, and I saw him gone. And I saw the initial M.M. And I saw another one. This one was his healthy. I saw letter B and letter H. Mighty man of God. I saw this one, the healthy has been on and off, and people don't know about this. But he has been experiencing that to one point he felt numb all over his face as if he's going through stroke. And the heart started beating, it was like, and it's about to come back. And another time you're trying to go into the shower, there's a shake in your hand that is like, you can feel you're about to die. And in 2024, it's grace for you to pass it. I'm a small boy, I cannot cover you. But I believe this is the will of God. So the best way you can deal with this story, put yourself in the track with God. Because the last days are always the most difficult is to be perfectly walking with God. And put things in order and make sure your doctrine is clean. Because your words and your doctrine shall be the script for the next generations to come. Because of how God has been using you. So these are two men of God that I saw. They will not finish 2024. The other one already prophesied about himself. Because what will happen after his death shall be a great massive move of God around the world. Because sometimes God will put too much anointing in one person. That on the death of Elijah, many prophets will rise. So God can give you an anointing that if when you die, revival will shoot. So it is not my willing for you to die, but if the church can pray, your life can be prolonged like the king who prayed and God gave him 15 more years, it can be possible with you. But I saw those two coffins, MMBH, those two men of God, they need prayers. Serious prayers. Serious, serious, serious prayers. Very important. Serious prayers. And there's a man of God, I haven't yet seen the name of this one, but he's of a young age. Probably not 50 or not 60, but uh, I saw death. Is it an accident? Is what? It's just a sudden death. You did much for the body of Christ. Not like those big generals, but in your level, you did well. But if you don't repent of your ways, your life shall be cut short very easily. And the church will keep on saying, he started well. He was doing good, but when he started joining this and trying to do this, he went off. And because he was outside of his assignment, the devil had him. You don't want to be that example. So God is saying, come back into your first love. Come back into your first love. And I'll use you once again. But this one is a young man that I see sudden death. It will start with like a warning. There will be breaking news. A man of God died. It's like a car accident, this, this, and that. Then you come out after about a day or two and say, I'm alive. But after that, there is a sudden death that is coming. So pray that the life of the man of God can be preserved. Pray that the life of a man of God can be preserved. I saw two names. One was Celine. This one, I, I cannot be, a, I cannot be like, I saw Celine Jones, Don, Celine Dion. Ah, she really needs prayers. She's here in America, right? 
if I'm here or anyone who knows it, I will advise it to look for prophet person for prayers. So I saw a out not okay and I saw in a coffin. And it will be a miracle to, to, to pass September next year. Yeah. September 2014 to pass it. Uh, I don't know. But pray for Celine Dion and uh, Elton Jones. Elton Jones. I don't know who knows Elton Jones. Does he sing? Yeah. Yeah, I started knowing that name today. Uh, Elton Jones, Celine Dion, they need real prayers. They need the real prayers. Real, 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 real prayers. I saw one Nigerian artist gone. I couldn't see him on the stage. Those rising ones. I can't see him on stage. I said, is it prison? I don't know. Is it coffin? I don't know. But I, I see Nigeria losing a big artist. A very big artist. This coming, this, uh, I don't want to say December. This coming 2024. I see uh, an artist. Bam! He's gone. You know, when I see, I see. And my prophecies come to pass. All of them. So it is your need as church to pray that this will not happen. Because prayer changes the future. But I see Nigerian artists, they need prayers. Because some of these guys, they belong to a certain cult. I didn't say these guys. I said some of these guys belong to a certain cult. Because when they looked for fame and they didn't have Jesus, they had shortcuts and rituals to be rising up. Now that they are big, they feel like I don't need to be part of that cult. And the God, they say, we sought you. Pray for the Nigerian artist. If it's not a coffin, it's a, it's a prison. My vision is not yet clear, but I don't see this one on stage. We need prayer for the Nigerians. What thing be this? Anyways, I also saw the church back and forth. There is a technology, the homo, homologam. Homologram, what do you call it? Hologram, where you appear somewhere. Yeah, yeah I saw it being introduced this coming year. 2024. I see the rising of the big old artists having concerts. I saw them packing stadiums. They will bring people like uh, B.I.G., The Notorious. The two parks and the likes, and even those that are alive will be also doing the same. But now, the church should not refuse to be part of this now. The church should jump on it now. Because I see it becoming a platform where preachers are preaching different countries in the same time. I see stadiums being filled by pastors and preachers. But the problem is the church is going to start saying we don't believe in this. You know the church is always behind? Yeah. Don't be behind this. Evangelists, be the first one in Atlanta to do this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very important that the church will jump into this. I'm not saying I'm endorsing on what. I'm telling you what I saw in a vision. This is going to benefit the church. But there is another technology I saw being introduced. Yeah. As the baby is saying, yeah, they're going to do something to the baby that will conv convert sound into words. Whoa. It's coming. They already made something for it. You don't know yet, but I saw it in the spirit. So it will convert the sounding yeah, into words. So you'll be able to know what your baby is saying at the age of one month, <laughs> two four days. Three months, you'll be knowing your baby saying, I want to pee, I want to poop. Your baby saying, I want some, some food, fufu and kenke. <laughs> but this one don't make your children be part of it. It shall be perfected later, but this one that will start, the kids will be affected in the long run. When they grow, 
they will be weak, they will be, their mind will be weak. So these ones are like experiments that will affect your children. But later on, some like us, when we are like 60 and God is giving us more children than those ones. <laughs> those ones can do that. But these ones, for now, don't let your babies be part of it. Yeah, I know the church is always slow, slow and the church is always the last to jump in because of fear and stuff and, re and re being religious. But other things you can, but this one for the kids, protect your children. They will introduce something uh, that will convert sound into a... Uh. Lastly now, not the least, but this coming election of America is going to be the most interesting one. I'm not going to give you who's going to win today, but I already know. And with time, I'm going to break it down. Because I already reached out to the next president of America. I'm waiting for the communications and stuff. But I'll give you a hint. There's going to be, I will say, black men. And there's going to be white men with white hair. And there's going to be a lady. That's my end. But this is going to be the most interesting election ever. The most interesting. I was eating nice bacon with Evangelist in uh, Trump Towers Hotel one day. And, uh, okay, I will tell you, I will tell you another time. But when the time gets closer, I'll give you a revelation of what God told me. And I know for 100% sure it shall come to pass. It will surely come to pass. So we need to pray. And I believe God is going to, to cover us, to cover America to cover many, many lives, and many people are going to be blessed. Uh, Zimbabwe, I saw uh, sanctions being removed in Zimbabwe. This coming year, 2024, sanctions will be removed. And Zimbabwe shall be the bread basket of Africa once again. The dollar of Zimbabwe will gain ground and power. Zimbabwe shall be like a paradise. In fact, it will be called the, the Dubai of Africa. Give it a few years, God is restoring it back into the old, old days. And favor shall be in Zimbabwe in all African countries. Zimbabwe will rise again, and it will shine, and God will bless it. Uh, last prophecy I'll give is that I will be blessed in 2024. Amen. And... You will be blessed, 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 blessed. blessed. I will say it will be the year of the prophetic. Do you know what it means? The prophetic is fought by two spirits, Leviathan and Jezebel. So into the demonic world, the Illuminati people will call it the year of the spider. Because spider represents Jezebel in the book of Proverbs, right? And the book of Revelation. The Illuminati people. Those from the dark world who call it the year of the dragon. Because Isaiah 27 says Leviathan is the dragon of the air. They'll call it the year of the dragon. That is why there will be natural disasters. Okay, somebody read uh, Isaiah 27, verse 1, so I can break down how the enemy will penetrate into 2024. Yes. Isaiah 27, verse 1. Yes. In the day the Lord with his sword, with mm. his saw and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan. Shall punish who? Leviathan. Only God will punish Leviathan. 
If you go to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 41, you understand that the battle with Leviathan is not easy. He says, touch him and do not do it again. If you throw spears, they are like straws. Its skin is so hard that you can't penetrate it. So it is only the Lord, according to Isaiah 27, that will punish Leviathan with his great and mighty sword. Yes? The piercing serpent. It is the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon. So Leviathan is the dragon of the air. He is the crocodile of the sea. And he's the snake that appeared in the book of Revelation, uh, Genesis chapter 3. The devil is defeated from heaven. He cannot work. He has to use humans or demons to operate. So he uses Leviathan as a snake, Leviathan as a crocodile, Leviathan as the dragon of the air. So you understand there will be deceit on the ground. That's a snake. There will be natural disaster from water. That's the crocodile of the sea. And there will be natural disaster of fire. That's the dragon of the air. So there will be airborne diseases, virus that will move. You will see. But that's from the dark world, Leviathan. From the Illuminati is going to be Jezebel. But we shall call it the year of the prophetic. Yes. Hey. We are a prophetic generation. Yes. Whether the devil doesn't like it or not, we are prophetic. When we dress, we dress prophetically. Yes. When we eat, we eat prophetically. Yes. When we talk, we talk prophetically. Yes. When we preach, we preach prophetically. Yes. When we eat, we eat prophetically. Yeah. When we drive, we drive prophetically. Yeah. When we buy houses, we buy prophetically. Yeah. When we help people, we help them prophetically. Yeah. Everything about ourselves is prophetic. Yeah. Whether the devil hates it or not, we are a prophetic generation. A prosperous voice that shall preach Jesus to the world. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Give your spirit.